gems are the most valuable currency in rise of kingdoms because you can basically turn them into anything that you want you can spin the wheel of fortune for commanders or you can get your hands on blueprints for your equipment or you can even instantly train more troops if you're a giga chad mega whale so today we're gonna go over six places that i think you should be spending your gems as well as six places that you should almost definitely avoid and then we're gonna sprinkle in just a couple of tips right in the middle to get you guys a little bit of extra value but first what's going on guys cheers a fresh cup of cafe bustello okay now the first thing that we have to consider is how you're going to be spending gems as an early game player as a mid game player and as a late game player okay because if you just started rise of kingdoms there are some things that you have to be spending your gems on that players in the late game have already finished a long time ago and they're going to be spending their gems on a way different thing so let me define to you guys in this video how i'm thinking about early game mid game and late game okay for me the early game is players that don't have a city hall 25. now i know that if you're a brand new player that sounds daunting you're like oh my god city hall 25 i thought that was like end game like no once you get city hall 25 i think that's when you enter the mid game of rise of kingdoms okay so if your city hall is not 25 you are in the early game in my opinion in my mind entering the mid game happens around the first time that you enter your first season of conquest assuming that you have city hall 25 because this is when you're first starting to build those most powerful armies for pvp for kvk for fighting other players and then the late game in my opinion is when you're building your fourth or your fifth army you're working on converting a lot of your purple gear into legendary gear or maybe even getting talents on some of that legendary gear and you're focused on your third fourth fifth season of conquest and beyond okay so where should you be spending your gems if you are in the early game if you're a relatively new player well I think a lot of players know that VIP six is the first benchmark that you should absolutely be gunning for when you start the game because that will get you the second building queue permanently and this will effectively double your building speed which helps you get to the later game okay so this is important this you could probably do within the first like week or two weeks or something like that it's been a long time since I was in the early game okay so I don't know exactly how long this takes but VIP shouldn't take you more than a month at least right like if you're playing every day you should be able to get this eventually but the next milestone we have to talk about is VIP 10. now VIP 10 gets you one legendary commander sculpture every day and one gold key every day now the reason that this is important is because legendary commander sculptures in rise of kingdoms unlike other games can be used on literally any legendary commander in the game other games have season tokens right you can only use it on season one or season two or whatever in rise of kingdoms a universal sculpture can be used on cpo prime or it can be used on an early commander like richard the first they are equivalent in this game so hoarding these sculptures and saving up the vip 10 one legendary commander sculpture every single day is going to be super important for unlocking and expertising some really powerful commanders in the late game beyond this vip 12 will get you two legendary commander sculptures a day and vip 14 will get you three legendary commander sculptures per day now getting to vip 14 is not an early game achievement it literally takes hundreds of thousands of gems to get to vip 14 but focusing on getting as close to vip 10 at least as possible is very very important now also i mentioned the gold key and this is important too because if you're a an older player maybe you think gold keys are garbage like i do because they're basically useless for me but as a new player getting your hand on a golden key every single day is crucial because it's basically another pull of the roulette wheel that is the tavern and there are some commanders in the gold keys that are actually pretty good okay if you look at pyrus if you look at the Mose, if you look at charles martel if you look at mehmed or mulan those are all commanders that are decent they're not better than season of conquest they're not on the same caliber but they're pretty good especially like mehmed for example with their relic they can be used in season of conquest with great effect so getting your hand on a gold key or an additional gold key every single day just gives you more chances to get those legendary commanders and maybe get them to that five five one one state where they are like minimally viable right that's going to be super important so the gold keys here are huge now you don't want to just be dumping your gems into vip whenever you get the chance we're going to talk later in the video about a really important tip that's going to get you a lot of value out of investing in your vip at the right times so please stay tuned for that because i don't want you guys to just waste your gems on vip because if i drop five thousand gems into vip i get nothing to show for it unless i move to a next level right so it's really important to get value out of those gems if you're going to spend them anyway so stay tuned for that in just a moment but the second place that you should be focusing on spending gems as an early game new player 
is on books of covenants masters blueprints arrows of resistance and sages testimony now of these four two of them are not really worth spending gems on okay uh the arrows of resistance will be a bottleneck for upgrading your watchtower which you will have to do to get tier five units and the sages testimony is not going to be a bottleneck for anything other than the speed with which you're getting more armaments now we're going to talk about armaments later in the video but as an early game player sages testimony absolutely nobody should be considering them okay because there's there's a lot of reasons okay but first of all once you get to level 10 and you unlock dispatches like you're pretty much good okay you're pretty much good until the late game because this is where you're going to get a lot of your value okay and you're also going to be able to get sages testimony for free over time because you're going to get them from traveling you're also going to get sometimes you get a hundred from this dismat uh, this dispatch uh chest that you get after 15 dispatches and you'll also sometimes get them from the dispatches themselves okay so there's a lot of ways that you can get them for free and they're not something you should be focused on in the early game same thing again with arrows of resistance you're going to get these by defeating barbarians by defeating the, i think the low harsh trial you can get a bunch of these as well right so there are ways to get the arrows of resistance without spending 10 gems a piece it might be tempting because you might not want to grind but you can get them much easier than you can get books of covenant so here we have books of covenant and master's blueprints both of these i think you can and for master's blueprints you must spend gems on now if you're a free-to-play player should you spend gems on books of covenant technically the correct answer is no you should not spend any gems in books of covenant but realistically most players are not going to grind all of the forts that they need to do so okay i know that you know if you're a free-to-play player and you're hardcore you're mad in the comments that i'm saying this but the reality is only 1.24 percent of players get city hall 25. think about that 1.24 percent that means 99% of players don't hit City Hall 25, okay? And I think a lot of the reason for that is because they run up against some of these bottlenecks like the uh, like the Books of Covenant, right? So realistically, if you're going to spend gems on any of these, first of all, you need the Master's Blueprints to get a building from 24 to 25, so you have to buy these, okay? And again, I'll talk about when you should buy them in a moment. Uh, but books of the covenant covenant i would say grind as many forts as you can every single day uh, just get into the most active alliance that you can uh and do this as best as you can eventually you may be really close and you'll buy a couple of these just so you can max out your castle okay which again you need to get this to 25 in order to get your academy to 25 and that's what you need to get your t5 units okay so it's non-negotiable you must get these eventually and i think some players should spend some amount of gems on these uh, don't go and spending 50,000 gems like that's crazy okay uh, but spend some amount to just get yourself there now the best time to buy your books of covenant or your master's blueprints or to be dumping gems into your VIP is during an event called more than gems okay I've alluded to this a couple times in the video already but the more than gems event comes around I would say probably every one and a half to two months maybe it's a little bit less frequent than that I would say over the past few months it seems like it's less common than usual uh, you can comment down below if you know exactly what the schedule is for this. I know some players have built schedules and recently they haven't been that accurate. So I didn't want to include them here, but more than gems comes around every once in a while. And this is a two day event that resets every day. Okay. So as you can see here, if you spend 7,000 gems, you'll get five legendary commander sculptures, two golden keys, some speed ups, resources, and a bunch of stuff from the tiers above it. I, this is a picture, so I can't scroll up, uh, but you do get more free stuff as well. If you spend 25,000 gems in a single day, you'll get all the rewards above it and eight legendary commander sculptures, three gold keys, speed ups, resources, etc. And then on the second day of more than gems, all of this resets okay so there's a few strategies here of course if you have the gems to do it um, this is where you want to buy your master's blueprints this is where you want to buy your books of the covenant this is where you want to dump gems into vip because typically you're not really going to get any value out of buying those things but during this event you will no matter where you spend your gems you will it will count towards this event uh, and you can either spend 7,000 gems one day wait till the next day for it to reset and then spend 7,000 gems again and in that case it'll be 14,000 gems total and you'll get 10 legendary commander sculptures four keys etc which is pretty good value because again you have to buy the master's blueprints so you might as well buy them during this event or if you have the gems to do it like if you're a medium spender or whatever or if you've been hoarding uh you know you could do 25 gem 25k gems one day 
25k gems the next day and that's 50,000 gems which is insane most free to play players should not be doing this uh, but you will get 26 legendary commander sculptures for doing it and you'll also be getting 10 gold keys and again you'll be spending gems on things that you already needed to buy anyway okay so this is the first bonus tip of the video wait for more than gems okay don't get impatient just save your gems spend them here this is the best way to go the next thing that you should save your gems for is what's called the 7,000 gem event okay that's what the players call it but typically every time that there is a holiday they rotate between a couple of different formats for that holiday and one of those formats is a, a event where you can spend 7,000 gems okay and you will unlock a tier of rewards and if you can get to level 25 during that event which you can just not spend the gems until you get there by the way i think that's a good strategy definitely what you should be doing honestly you have to be active for the event in order for this to be worth it but if you can get to level 25 you get like i think five or six thousand gems back right like in this premium tier and in the in the actual rewards tier you get a combined total of like five thousand gems or something like that so really you're only spending two thousand if you actually finish this and you get a grand total of like 30 or 35 legendary commander sculptures for 7,000 gems, which is just insane value. And that's not even to mention all the other amazing things that you get here. You get, uh, you know, as you can see, you get some epic material choice chests and some epic blueprints as well. Uh, there's a lot to love about this event. And if you're a free to play player or really anybody, um, you want to at least make sure you have 7,000 gems on your account. Just, just always just pretend that 7,000 is zero okay never go below 7,000 unless you you know that you'll be able to get them back by the time this event comes around because this is probably the best value in the entire game for your gems okay what we talked about earlier is stuff that you have to spend gems on this is just insane value that you should be spending gems on definitely definitely do this for everybody watching this video no matter who you are if you're a giga chad mega well do this okay just do it okay as you're progressing from the early game into the mid game the next thing that you want to be spending your gems on is the wheel of fortune okay now this event comes around every two weeks it comes around with the mightiest governor event and it will change between different troop types so one wheel will be all archer commanders then it'll be all cavalry commanders then all infantry commanders and it typically goes in a predictable cycle now if they release a new commander that commander will be on the wheel for i think three or four cycles before it drops off even if it's not the correct troop type so it could be an archer wheel but if they just released a cavalry commander it'll be that cavalry commander plus all the archers and that's how you can get your hands on new commanders but the reason that I say focus on this in the early to mid game and mainly the mid to late game is because the best commanders in the game that you can get from the wheel of fortune only come around in this season of conquest, or I guess at this point it's season three and later of rise of kingdoms. Okay. Uh, in those commanders, there's only a handful of commanders that you really should even bother spinning the wheel for. And the number one targets for your wheel of fortune gems should be CPO prime. That is legendary CPO. Okay. Also Nevsky, Zhuge Leong, Utica prime, Joan of Arc prime. And in the early game, if you are a super active, especially for to play, but if you're super active in the early game and you plan on chaining barbarians, you do want to spin for Yi song Ye as well. Now, after you've built your best army for cabs and your best army for infantry and your best army for archers, uh, and you want to go in and get a couple more commanders, other ones that you could consider would be commanders like Sargon or Guan Yu. Now, I do think that our new infantry that is coming out in just a few days, that is Lu Che, I think he will probably replace one or both of these depending on how many armies you're building. We'll talk about that in another video, but you also can consider a commander like Huo Chibing or a commander like William. There are a lot of different commanders that are actually very powerful that you can get from the Wheel of Fortune. Now, again, the Wheel of Fortune does come around the entirety of your Rise of Kingdoms experience, but throughout KVK one and KVK two, you know, you're going to get access to commanders like Edward of Woodstock or Saladin comes on the wheel, right? Like these are not commanders that you really should be investing in as a new player or a free to play player. Okay. You could make the argument about Alexander the Great or whatever the case is, but the actual best wheels that you can spend your gems on are the ones in the season three and season of conquest okay so that's why this part of the video is for mid to late game or as you're entering into the mid game now the best way to get value out of the wheel of fortune is either to spin it 10 times or to spin it 100 times like mathematically based on the calculations the most value or the best value per legendary commander sculpture 
realistically will occur at the 10 and the 100 mark now the reason that I say realistically is because this is a wheel of fortune. It is a gamble. Okay. So sometimes you can get good value. Sometimes you'll get bad value. So just keep that in mind. And the reason that this is good value, right? A lot of players, they don't explain this. They don't mention why, why is wheel of fortune such good value. The reason is because on average, when you do the math, you will typically get at least one legendary commander sculpture per 1000 gems. Okay. That is roughly how it is. Uh, it could be less. You could get really lucky and you'll get, you know, one sculpture per 750 gems. You could get really unlucky and it's, you know, one commander sculpture per 1300 gems, right? It really depends. It is, it is a luck game, but on average with the law of averages, typically it's about a thousand gems per sculpture. Okay. Uh, and that really helps with the milestone rewards because after you spin it 10 times, you will get five commander sculptures for the commander that you're spinning for guaranteed. And then at the 100 mark, you're guaranteed 15 commander sculptures of the commander you're spinning for. And along the way, there are other milestones as well. You will get your hands on some universal legendary commander sculptures along those milestones. So definitely worth spinning at least to 10, if not to 100 every time that the wheel comes around now if you're a free to play player or you're a new player and you have a bunch of different commanders that you have to get your hands on you're not going to be able to spin this 100 to 100 every single time it's just you're not going to have enough gems to do that so you really want to make sure that you're focusing all on one troop type first so you know get your cavalry army as best as you can and then get your infantry army as best as you can get your archer army as best as you can and then go from there right so you know don't dump all your gems into an archer wheel and then the next wheel is infantry you dump all your gems into your infantry wheel and now you have like one commander of both troop types that's like kind of usable but you can't pair them together right so really focus on one army at a time and just to be clear here the reason that a thousand gems per sculpture is good value is because if you look at the vip shop as the benchmark two thousand gems per sculpture okay so you know if you can get that for 50 percent off that's really good value right that and that's why the 7k gems event is so good because it's way better value than that right all right so in the mid game and you're entering season of conquest you're focusing mainly on just getting those good commanders okay now as you're transitioning from the mid game to the late game that's when you're going to be focusing on getting good equipment okay and this is the best way to do that and the best way to spend your gems for this is the holy knight's treasure okay now here's the thing you it's it's true to make a good army you need both commanders and equipment you can't just have one or the other so you can't just be spinning wheels and not focusing at least a little bit on your equipment but as you are progressing through the mid game and into the late game you're gonna have good commanders and then you're gonna shift more towards getting good equipment right and the reason that commanders take priority over equipment is because first of all it, you know a lot of players use let's say nevsky primary with joan of arc secondary okay so if you're a free to play player your nevsky joan is gonna look identical on the field to somebody as a wales nevsky joan right it's the same commanders they don't get any other information from it unless they you know unless they start fighting it they know that oh you've got better equipment on this guy compared to this other player but if you focus on equipment first then you could have all legendary equipment and putting it on your charles martel with ethel flood right like like it's obvious that in the open field you're going to get swarmed down you're going to get destroyed even if you have really good equipment on that on that commander um it's just not going to be able to compete with some of the mechanics of the newer commanders okay they just output way more damage so that's why you want to get your hands on your good commanders first once you get them to five five one one or five 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 one or whatever the case is they become usable then you could start to shift your focus a little bit towards equipment get some good equipment pieces on them and then maybe go back and expertise the commanders and it's kind of a back and forth okay now the holy knight's treasure again this is my favorite event for getting uh, equipment related things so you do have a good chance of getting some pick one epic material choice chests you either get one two or three which is really really good you also again in the mid game you will probably be using some epic blueprints some epic pieces of equipment so getting your hands on some of these blueprints isn't the end of the world then of course you're going to get some speed ups here which is okay but it's not great and some resources as well but you'll notice here that there is also a milestone reward here for the holy knight's treasure and every time this event comes around those milestones could be different okay so for one event it could be gloves the next event it could be you know helmets you want to make sure whenever this comes around that you are getting the milestone rewards for the legendary blueprint choice chests that you care about okay so if you already have 
great legendary helmets on every commander that you use then if a helmet holding a treasure comes around it might not be that valuable to you to spin or to spend that many gems here okay so just pay attention to that but as you can see here in the middle you get to pick a legendary blueprint uh that you care the most about so you could focus on set pieces for different commanders and that's why this event is so valuable okay so you're going to get a free open every single time you're also going to get a 2400 gem cost for five which is really nice this event comes around again for three days so you will have some time to spend your gems on this um i think this is the best place to spend in order to get either material choice chests or blueprints which is great now I just want to make this tip very clear I did just touch on it a moment ago but I would recommend at least a combination of purple and legendary gear to fight in season of conquest so for example my Huo Chi Bing uh you could see here we have three pieces of purple and this is fine uh I used this in my KVK I did fine it was great I get I traded pretty well it was good okay you don't need all legendaries to fight in in KVK I don't know where that idea came from players think that that's the case even in seasonal conquest you can use some purples it's totally fine the a talented purple typically has a about the same amount of stats as a non-talented legendary the only problem is you can't use iconics on them which obviously is a problem moving forward but just because you don't have all legendaries doesn't mean you can't fight okay that's an absolutely ridiculous thing if you just sit around and wait for you to get all legendaries with talents and all this stuff like you're just not going to be playing the game you got to play the game you got to enjoy it you got to fight you got to do what you want to do to have fun okay so don't wait till you have all legendary don't wait till you have all iconics it's not you don't need that okay eventually yes you work towards it but you don't need it look at my archer set okay my Boudicca prime primary with Jugaliong secondary is what I used in this kvk I only have three legendary pieces here it's fine it does well they're good commanders this equipment is good it, you don't you don't need all legendaries it's ridiculous and absurd to think that so get your equipment to a usable level then focus on another sets and then eventually once you flesh out three four five armies then you go back and really get okay let's make sure we get all the legendaries get some talents and that's how you want to do it okay flip back and forth between commanders equipment commanders equipment and then when there's new commanders that come out maybe focus on commanders as well okay now before we move on to the events that you should probably avoid spending your gems on I want to give you guys two more tips that are super valuable when it comes to spending your gems the first one is where do you get gems okay especially if you're a free to play player where are these gems coming from okay well first of all as you saw there are different events that you can get your gems from you also get gems from your just daily quests okay 100 gems here you also can get some gems from like the mightiest governor for example you know overall rankings you do get um different rewards in the form of gems uh these this isn't the best place to get gems obviously but there are some places where you can get some nice gems also um chaining and farming barbarians you're gonna get gem drops from this which is really really good same thing with like marauders pre kvk rewards really good stuff to get gems there as well but one crucial way that you can definitely get a couple thousand gems per day doing every single day is by literally farming gems okay now the best way to do this and let me see if I can even find a, a, a gem node around here we just came back to home kingdom so there should be some around okay here's a level two and a level one I think in kvk they go up to level three maybe more than that um I don't I never farm gems so I don't know exactly but um if you check out this video that I posted a few days ago I posted an account overview from a player who goes by not found okay uh he's not free to play but he does have 15 farm accounts 15 farm accounts is insane okay now I don't think every player needs 15 farm accounts uh, I think if you're a free-to-play player you should have probably three to six farm accounts somewhere in there if you're really hardcore and you're really like focusing on the game and the reason for that is because those farm accounts are where you're going to be getting your resources okay your food your wood your stone your gold especially your gold that's where you're going to get all those resources and then on your main account is where you would farm gems and this is because the other resources can be sent to you gems cannot be sent to you so your main is the only account that you have that can even consider farming gems so you might as well do it now again this is very time consuming you have to be online pretty much all day to be focused on jumping from node to node to node because it does take only a few minutes 10 20 30 minutes to go through these gem nodes uh, and then they start to run back okay and then you're wasting time walking back to your city you should be focused on sending them to the next gem node because the amount of uh, gems you're going to get from this isn't that 
that much so you can have a lot of troops in that gathering army and you can you know gather thousands of gems at a time before going home before running out of space right that is a great way to get gems but it is extremely time consuming again i know some free to play players can get over one to two thousand gems per day just by doing this depending on how much time they spend and also what events are happening during that day but having multiple farm accounts is what enables you to do this right because if you don't have farm accounts then you need to get your resources from somewhere and you're just going to be spending all your time getting resources and not gems so that is why multiple farm accounts are crucial to do this and the last little tip i want to give you guys is getting yourself in the best and most active alliance that you possibly can in your kingdom and if it means you must then you should transfer or migrate to another kingdom in order to accomplish this and this is obviously because if you're in a powerful alliance and an active alliance two things happen first of all the whales will spend money and you're going to get gems for free okay now again we just ended kvk so there are no gold chests that were purchased recently but even the wooden chests and the bronze chests uh and and the iron chests you're going to get some amount of gems every single day from other players spending money which is nice that's amazing as a free to play player also in active alliances you are going to be getting a lot of fort trophies and hopefully you're helping out get these trophies as well and as you can see you can get action point recovery potions from some of these fort chests okay uh and you want to basically save all these potions for sp specific events whether it's a holiday event or whether it's marauders or whether it's kvk barbarians whatever the case might be you can use those action points to get gems okay again if you're chaining barbs in kvk you're going to want to use these action points to get more barbarian kills and remember the barbarians drop gems all right so that is the way that you convert ap into gems and that is how free to play players get a lot of their gems and it does it is a grind but being in the best alliance you possibly can be is crucial now you might be saying on well why would a whale alliance let a free to play player in um that's a good question a lot of times it is very hard to do that but it is possible you can do it uh, i think 12 inch pvp is in an imperium kingdom if i'm not mistaken i don't know for sure so don't quote me on that but if you don't know who that is he is a very popular free to play uh rise of kingdoms youtuber very good advice definitely check him out on youtube he has a lot of live streams that he does where he helps players so highly recommend his content but he is the prime example of if you are a valuable player then players will let you into their good alliances okay uh, and this might mean that okay yes you're not spending but maybe you're online often to be an r4 you can help them plan for kvk you can help them track stats you can help them track you know kills power deaths things like that for every kvk you also might be able to you know help give titles to players that need it they might be asking in kingdom chat can i have duke can i have you know scientist whatever uh you can help facilitate that process when other players are offline right there's a lot of things that you can do that you can offer to a kingdom and that's why it's important to focus on diplomacy focus on being a member of the community focus on you know don't be a troll in lost kingdom chat don't be annoying in your home kingdom chat right make friends try to get into the best alliance that you can it is possible as free to play but it does take quite a bit of time and effort and work and you have to make the right connections okay now let's talk about some events that you should avoid spending your gems on and one of the events that i'm gonna say you should probably avoid is esmeralda's house now this event is better now than when it first came into the game uh they did rework this event i think like a year maybe a year and a half ago um it's a little bit better now but in my opinion it's just too expensive to be taking a risk here okay um unlike the the egg event the holy knight's treasure that costs 2400 gems for a five uh, five openings of the of the treasure here it's 3600 and the rewards are pretty much the same it's very similar and it's quite unfortunate that that is the case now of course there is a big a higher high end right like the, you could get legendary pick one chest which is better but it costs more and I just find that every time I spend on this event uh, I get wrecked okay I get you know resources I get blueprint fragments that I don't care about I get research speed ups right uh it's awful now also um as you'll see here there's no universal speed ups and if you look at the holy knight's treasure there is there's 15 hours and there's 30 hours of of that so like I just feel like there's just way better value in the holy knight's treasure than there is for esmeralda so I would recommend for most players you know if, if you want to go to 10 sure but realistically that's so expensive right like that's 36,000 gems like it's just not worth it okay 
it's not worth it most of the time you should be avoiding this event in the same vein as that is esmeralda's prayer now this is typically a holiday event uh and i don't love this event okay i, I don't know what your opinion is on this but for me i tend to get like i get so many stars so many gold keys it's awful okay this is it's awful for me for just for me okay now one thing i will say is like look there's no um at least for the screenshot here this this might be different depending on every time it comes around but at least for this screenshot you could see that there is no uh, research speed ups there's no building speed ups that's nice okay but for me like ah i just don't think the value is really there it's just it's not there for me now i actually i'll be honest i haven't done the math for this event specifically but I never really hear players talking about how much they love this event. Uh, I never hear players asking Lilith to implement this more. And I think there's a reason for that, right? I think like most players think, okay, it's fine. And if you're a spender, like sure, spend a little bit on this event. You could get a nice chunk of legendary commander sculptures. But for me, the probabilities here aren't great. And a lot of times this event is good for maybe getting your hands on like a, um, a limited time city skin that maybe you missed in the past or something like that. Um, and even, you know, like this here, really like a a blueprint for an epic accessory not great for mid to late game it's just not okay so i typically would recommend players avoid this event uh, don't really spend too much on it not a great event from my experience next let's talk about dalruk's puzzle box or is it dalruk i don't know i don't even know who dalruk is is he in the game somewhere is he like one of the you know lost kingdom pve content boss i don't know i don't know who dalruk is you can let me know in the comment section below but this is his puzzle box apparently and basically you you get these little items here and it'll give you opportunities to open up these different slots and as you open them up the, it fills up this uh puzzle box over here i guess and you know you get certain rewards for getting this to 100 percent now i will say if you get lucky and you hit the best prize here uh it unlocks all them and it's really good value but that's a one in 16 chance okay um and that's it's just not good odds it's just not good odds i don't think this is a great event i don't even know anybody who really like loves this event i know some players do this for like youtube videos or live streams or whatever but I pretty much just ignore this event every time it comes around. I don't really understand this event. I don't know who, who this is for. I think it's mainly for whales. It just doesn't feel like it's a, it's a good use of your uh, gems to me. I also don't even know how many gems it costs to buy these tokens because I literally just never pay attention to this event. It's just not good. Another place you should avoid spending gems altogether is the mysterious merchant. Okay. You're going to see some things like. 80% discount, 90% discount. And even still it's really, it's not great value. It might be tempting to get 90% off resources, but check this out. If I come over here and I farm this level six logging camp, I get 100% off. Okay. It's a 100% discount. Cause it's literally free. I will get these for free by farming and logging off okay so resources are free on the map if you're running out of them that means you should be making a farm account not spending gems for resources and same thing with speed ups like you're going to get speed ups from events and it might be tempting especially if you're trying to push like city hall 25 or something or getting your tier 5 units um but really like it's not worth spending the gems here in the long run when you compare the opportunity cost right any gems that you spend here are gems you can't spend on the wheel of fortune to get Scipio prime or you know spending on the holy knight's treasure and you could have spent and gotten even more speed ups from that event than from her right so don't spend your gems on mysterious merchant the only possible exception would be if it's during more than gems the event that we talked about earlier and you have nothing else to spend on then okay maybe buy a couple things here just to you know push towards the rewards a little bit but realistically don't do it not worth it no value that you should be concerned about also we talked about this earlier but the vip shop is not a good place to spend your gems okay basically nobody should be spending gems here the only exception to this is again during the more than gems event if you have nothing else to spend your gems on that's a good time to buy these 24 hour oops i just bought one now but it doesn't matter i'm going to use it uh this is a good time to buy the 24 hour enhanced defense because this gives you 10 percent defense for 24 hours and this is basically a must have for pvp in rise of kingdoms okay if you're in kvk you basically need to be using this every time you're fighting another player because guess what they're going to be using it and you don't want to have 10 percent less defense than them okay um also 
again if you're a medium to high spender and you have nothing else to spend in your more than gems and you want to spend sure get the material choice chests but besides that like I, I don't know it there's just to keep it simple don't spend your gems here just don't okay just don't do it next let's talk about the hunt for history event now this is actually a kind of popular event uh, but I would say that most players probably shouldn't be spending gems for these hammers okay now one of the good things about this event is you get some hammers for free I think you get up to like 10 hammers for free or maybe 20 hammers for free I don't remember exactly you get some amount of hammers for free every single time this comes around the reason I don't remember is because I pay to win because I'm a loser okay uh, but some amount of these are free and you can save them okay so you can get some amount for free save them leave them in your inventory hunt for history comes around again you get some hammers for free you save them it comes around again it's you save you see so you get the trend here okay you build up these hammers you save them up you save up a bunch of them and the reason you want to save them is because eventually you will want to use them i mean you get them for free but the reason that you want to use them all in one hunt for history instead of you know 10 here 10 on the next one 10 on the next one is because every i believe it's every sixth floor is a floor where you can get a legendary blueprints okay and you get to choose that blueprint here now you also can choose the blueprint you also can choose what's on the regular floors i would always recommend uh unless you're working on like Kurok's humility or something like that um you should always be picking the epic material choice chest that is like the best value here especially in the late game it's the only thing even worth getting but save your hammers all for one so you can at least guarantee that you'll get to that sixth floor and get those premium rewards because there's no guarantee that you can do that if you're free to play any other way okay so that's the good thing about this event but in general the value here I personally don't love now the reason for that is because if you look at some of the rewards here okay um we have animal bones which are useless we have experience tombs actually just useless right if you look at some of the other events that we talked about that do have good value you'll see that they have pick one chests okay there's no experience tombs here uh and the materials that you get you can choose which means there's no animal bones here okay um in this event there is the chance of getting literal garbage literal useless stuff here uh and that's why i don't think this is as good as things like holy knight's treasure or the wheel of fortune right i think those are very good events no matter what i would say don't spend your gems here just save up those hammers all for one big push and get those um legendary blueprints when you can that's the best way to do this not really worth the gems in my opinion because again opportunity cost you could have spent those gems on the holy knight's treasure or on the wheel of fortune finally there is the in search of wonders event now this is a relatively new event that allows you to get your hands on some armaments okay you choose the formation that you want to get armaments for you click search okay and then it will basically search the map i guess search the map uh for that armament and once you click on it boom you get whatever it is now here is and credit to uh, sparkle 42 he has these this that's where i'm getting this video from okay but the reason that this event in my opinion is not worth spending gems on is because look at these stats brother look at those stats man does that look like a piece that was worth spending gems on absolutely not now what i will say is that if you are you know in the late game and you've got good commanders and you've got good equipment then of course of course you want good armaments okay but armaments should absolutely be the last thing that you focus on in your account okay and the reason for this is obvious if you spin for the wheel of fortune you know at the milestone rewards that you are guaranteed to get that commander and you know exactly what that commander is doing you know what their skills do you know what their talents are okay you know exactly what the troop type is if you are getting your equipment okay as you're working on the holy knight's treasure you're getting your hands on blueprints you craft that piece you know exactly what the uh, the bonuses are for that piece you know exactly what iconic bonuses you're going to get for that piece you know exactly what troop type that piece is for you are focusing your gems and your effort onto a guaranteed outcome okay for armaments you're going to spend your gems and yes you can pick the formation 
but you don't know exactly what the attributes are going to be you don't know for what troop type it's going to be it is random okay it is completely random is it going to have an inscription i don't know probably not is it going to be a good inscription i don't know probably not but it's all random okay so if you're gonna spend your gems on something spend it on something that you know the guaranteed outcome of obviously right you obviously want to do that and you're going to be getting armaments for free over time by your state using your state form your travels things like that there's other ways that you can get your hands on some armaments okay if you come over here into the armament shop uh i only have eight hours to buy these transmutation zones i gotta figure that out but uh you get the formation choice chests every single week okay this is a guaranteed source of armaments so yes more sources of armaments are better because of the law of averages but again if you're spending your gems on something you don't want to spend it on a complete like lottery basically okay wait until the end 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 a game the final late game that is when you can consider spending gems on the in search of wonders event but until then you can absolutely ignore this event the armament system is completely random okay so don't waste your gems here unless it's the only thing that you really need to improve your count your account and this should go without saying but as i mentioned in the beginning of the video never spend your gems on speeding up troops okay save this for the millionaires that's literally the only person that i would recommend doing that for it makes no sense it's literally there's no advantage to doing that it's stupid same thing with relic coins a hundred gems for one coin absolutely not never spend your gems here this is dumb no 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 don't do this all right guys this video was way longer than i thought it would be i think i gave you more tips than i said and i gave you more things to avoid than i said at the beginning so hopefully you guys found value in that if you did definitely drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below if there's anything that i missed if there's anything super important that you must spend your gems on let me know down there and if there's other events that you think are absolute garbage that you should definitely avoid also let me know in the comment section below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace